right? The way that we were measuring or counting those M&Ms was flawed. There are other types of bias that you will go into if you ever decide to take an AP stats class, but there's only one other bias that we're really gonna focus on in this class. But the measurement bias, right? I just want you to be aware of it in this situation. The counting or measurement process is flawed. We were never gonna get the right percentage of brown m &Ms. That's problematic. Okay, Once you're done with that, what I do want you to do is I want you to go back to your calculator, all right, and I want you to retype, mm, actually we may need to do, no, we should be able to do it here. Nope. You have to make a new page. So do a new list in spreadsheets. Do your M&M &M colors again, brown, yellow, green, and red, and then we're going to label one column out and one column in, meaning outside versus inside. Okay. So do a new page, a new list in spreadsheets, okay. By the way, you remember those days when you used to have to make graphs by hand? Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. Technology is beautiful. Okay? So, type in your colors, label those columns. Stop. I hope they didn't make me bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I have these last year? I mean, that's something just I have. Well, some teachers have the TI Inspires, but the ability, the navigator system, those little hats, I'm the only one here who has them. And it's because I am working on another degree at UA, but I'm part of a grant program as well that donated these to the classroom because of the work I'm doing at UA. Okay, so let's look at the stuff that was outside. What was the total number of brown M&Ms? 28. 28. Okay, so I'm gonna write these, actually I'm copy. Ooh, I think this can work. Um, does anyone know what shortcut allows you to copy things? Huh? Just on a computer. Control C. Control C or Command if you have a Mac. I think, let's find out. I believe you can highlight them, right? So use your cursor to highlight them. Hit Control C. Let's see if it'll copy and paste for us. And then what paste it? Control V. Dang, no, I lied. V. Control no, V. What did I say? It was v. It's V. I don't know. But it's not going to let me do it. Uh, it's because I have it typed in as a formula. Alright, so we got 28. Sometimes it'll let you do it if it's not a formula. So 28, 98. And you can just copy it down from here. And we got a lot of green. 253 and 196. Okay? Inside, 38, 40, 142, and 80. So make sure you get those frequencies in there. All right. Once you have those frequencies in that new sheet, July, did you already get them all in there? So once we get all those in there, create another new page, right? So insert a new page. Hey, what unit are we studying right now? Statistics, what page do you think we're gonna make? The, you see where it says data and statistics underneath list and spreadsheets? Are you gonna list and spreadsheets? Um, we well, have to go out to make a new page, right? We have to save this one? Nope, you just hit control and then hit doc. You see, because you see gray where it says plus page there? Yep. 
so that's a little bit quicker. Okay. So do a data and statistics page. Notice what can we put along the x-axis here? Click to add a variable, okay? So one thing you're going to have to do, I believe you have to, let me see this real quick. You have to, How do you delete a page? Um, if you click control and up, mm -hmm. hold on. Yeah, control and up, it'll show you all the pages. And then when you have the page you want to delete highlighted, you just hit backspace. By up, you mean? The, so control and then the up button. Oh, okay. Okay. Next one. Oh, got it. Alright, so there should be. Okay. Go back to your previous page and I think you have to label your colors. Name it color? Yeah, that's what you have to do. So yeah, you have to name this column colors, or color, or C, or whatever you want, C-O-L. And once you do that, and you go to your data and statistics page, So, go back to your data statistics page, click where it says click to add a variable. Okay, do we type in the color? Mm -hmm. uh, click. And then add color. So, click on the bottom where it says click to add a variable. Okay, and then add your color. Oh, where did you do color yet? Alright, so you have to go back. I like this. I just so you have to name this color. Name that color. Mine really all just disappeared. I tried to do the central thing, and then I pushed the read on the one I wanted to read, and it's the only the one that I pushed the read on is the only one that's still like there. Mm, you accidentally deleted. Did you save the doc? Because you accidentally deleted your doc. Uh, not quite. You will have to do those two pages again. But just focus on this. So click to add variable. What variable am I adding on the x-axis? Color. Color. What variable am I going to add on the y-axis? Um, something either in it, or out. Either in or out. And I'm going to do out for now. What am I adding? Okay. Looks a little weird, doesn't it? So what could I do, well, hit the menu button once you've added your color, or added the out in there, okay? So once you hit the menu button, you should see these options. You see the plot type, the plot properties, okay? I want a different type of plot, so I'm going to go to plot type. What would be a good plot type? I don't want a histogram, I want to make a pie chart in TI Inspire. I've literally done this before. Hold on 
This is not how I had to do it before. There we go. Okay, so sorry for lying to y'all for a second. So go back to your color page, go back to your list and spreadsheets. You can do it differently on the uh, computer than you can on the calculators. So what you're going to want to do, all right, is when you're in the list and spreadsheets, go back to the menu button, okay, go to data, and to create your bar chart or a pie chart, you want to go to summary plot, okay. So when you're in list and spreadsheets, go to data, and then summary plot, your X list, which is your X axis, you want to be color. The summary list, you want to be your um, either your in or your out. And then do the display on a new page. Okay? So you can see it up there. X list is color. Summary list is, I have it as out right now. And then create a new page. I don't have an in or out as any of my, like, it doesn't say it, well, that's because you didn't make this page yet. Yeah, have so you? do I need to make that? You page? need that page, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how do I get? And then when you hit OK, it should automatically create a bar chart for you with the correct y-axis and correct x-axis. Now, invalid summary list. You have to put in, in or out. You have to put in or out for the summary list. Uh, yeah, color is just the X. You need in or out for the summary list, right? Because you're telling the calculator how many brown, how many Can you red. Go to that one, the in and out one. Say again. Mm -hmm. The one I don't have, the in and out. Um. Yes. Okay. So there it is. If you once you do your out, go ahead and do your in, um, Cameron, to make your life easier. Don't do a split page. Do a new page. Mm -hmm. So like when you, yeah, do a new one for the end, but I, I, Cameron has hers as a split page instead of a end page. So go back to through the summary. So hit menu. So let's do control Z to get rid of that. So when you do menu and do data again, so colors good. That needs to be out or in, whichever. Okay, enter. And you see how it says display on split page? You want it as a new page. Does that make sense? Okay. So go ahead and do it for your end as well. And then I'm going to show you one more thing, and then we're going to get started with the next activity so that we can start learning about experiments. Um, as I said, I'm going to email you screenshots of this and the graphs. Okay, um, for you to do math literacy and directions on the math literacy, so be on the lookout for that um, as well. So, go back to data, summary plot, I want in, and a new page. So with categorical, yes ma'am? Um, mine looks like this. <laughs> you made a histogram accidentally. I can't even make that in the first place. <laughs> Okay, so you did out and you did in. Remember, you need your yeah. x-axis, right? So menu, okay. data, summary, and so you want your x list to be the color. You need your summary list to be in. And so it's telling you how many colors you have. And that's going to be your y-axis. And then new page. Well, I have to have all the charts filled out. So all right. Be so, quick things. One, did we want the frequency, the actual pure counts? Yeah. No, Mr. Kenny, we wanted what instead? Oh, uh, S, uh, what was the other one? Predictions. We were trying to make a prediction, but we didn't want the frequencies. We wanted it started with an R. The something frequency, it starts with an R. Oh, relative. relative. Relative, right? A percentage or a proportion, okay? So go to plot properties, okay? I log. This is, yeah, is that yeah. plot type. That's what it's, it's not going to, mine's not going to be. Yeah, it's not going to let you actually do percentages. 
I do want you to see if you go to plot type though, so go to plot type instead, okay? And you can actually just click on pie chart and what does it automatically create? A pie chart, right? This is the beauty, I know it takes a second to learn how to do this, but on these calculators, once you get the data in, you can instantly go back and forth between different graphs, right? So I go back to plot type and I go back to a bar chart. Okay. Any questions there? So once you have your bar chart like this, go to plot type because you're going to change the type of plot, and you just click on plot chart. How did you get that bar down in the first place? What bar? The the stuff you're clicking. Menu. menu. Everything in the calculator, or most of the things in the calculator, run through menu. Well, I just wanted you to see that you can do it. I'm going to email you the um, pie chart and the bar chart, right, so that you can see um, different things, okay? All right, so from there, uh, as I said, I'll email that to you so you can analyze it as part of the math literacy, but let's get started with the next little activity. That will take quickly way less time. So flip your page over to is anchored putting better? I'm going to play a quick little video for us. You have to do something on golf. Yeah, uh, out of all the sports, you were like, golf's the one that I did. No, <laughs> I did not think that whatsoever. What I thought was this is a really good activity to understand and experiment. Mm. Mm, I know. So, please watch this quick little video. Have, by the way, do any of us know what anchored putting is? And you got a, like a way of putting your foot. No. no? So this is why we're going to watch this video to understand a little bit about what anchor putting is so that you understand how the experiment will work. We're all the way through the looking glass now. Okay. And I agree, it's not my favorite sport, but it's a good activity. Hello, I'm David Rickman, the R&A's Executive Director of Rules and Equipment Standards. And he's not Thomas Hagel, Senior Director of Rules of Golf and Amateur Status for the United States Golf Association. Golf's governing bodies regularly review the rules of golf to maintain the game's traditions and to ensure that it stays in sync with developments in the game. The purpose of this short film is to help educate all players of all skill levels with the proposed rule change concerning anchored strokes. The RNA and USGA have regulated the golf stroke on several occasions, including the prohibitions against pushing, scraping, and spooning, and certain methods of putting that are more similar to a billiard or croquet style stroke. The rationale behind the proposed rule change is to maintain the fundamental characteristics of the putting stroke. The proposed rule, which follows an extensive review by the USGA and the RNA, would prohibit strokes made with any club or a hand gripping the club held directly against the player's body, or with a forearm intentionally held against the body to establish an anchor point that indirectly anchors the club. The very essence of playing the game has been to grip the club with the hands and swing it freely. The player's challenge is to control the movement of the club when striking the ball, and anchoring the club alters the nature of that challenge. So let's look at what the proposed rule change means for golfers. While the new rule would allow the continued use of conforming equipment, including belly length and long putters, it requires that these clubs be used in accordance with the new rule. These are examples of strokes with these clubs that would not be allowed by the new rule. Here, the strokes would not be permissible because the club or the hand gripping the club is held intentionally in contact with the body. Under new rule 14-1b, the penalty would be two strokes in stroke play, or loss of hole in match play. The proposed rule also states that a player must not make a stroke using an anchor point established by intentionally holding the forearm in contact with his or her body. The narrow purpose of this part of the rule is to prevent the forearm from being used as an indirect way to achieve the same effect as if the club or hand were held against the body. Such a prohibited method of stroke like is demonstrated in this illustration. Cool. Let's start there. So why do we think 
that they might be getting rid of that. So they explained some of it, right? But in general, why are they going to get rid of that idea or get rid of that anchored putting where you have part of your arm or whatever anchored against your body? What's that going to do for a golfer? It's going to make it straighter. It's going to make it more stable, right? Remember, he said at the very beginning that you need to be able to freely move, and that's part of the... the, the um, uh, control is part of the word he used, um, the challenge of golf, right? So when you anchor it, it changes things, right? So what we need to consider, right, and what we're asking the question of, is many golfers started using long putters, anchored putting, until it was recently banned. Are anchored putters actually better than traditional putters? Does it actually make it, their job easier, right? So in your group, discuss an experiment that we could do in class to test which putter is better. We'll hopefully get a chance to do this actual experiment, and that's the other reason why we're going to use this, Gracie, is because it gives you a chance to actually do it. Um, but talk about what we're going to do there. What are some of the basic elements of an experiment? Control substitutes. So you might need a control. What else? You have an independent variable, right? And then what do we have along with that independent variable? A dependent, a dependent variable, right? And so the basic element of an experiment is I want to see, does the independent variable, what is the independent variable here? The normal golf club. The normal golf club swing, right? Or uh, putting swing versus what? The, the anchored one, right? We have two independent variables or two different what we call treatments. The idea of normal uh, putting versus the anchored putting, and we want to measure how much does it affect uh, a golfer's ability to uh, putt, right? We go with those ideas. From there, I want you to work within your groups to discuss and create an experiment um, that we could actually do in class to see which type of putting is better. We all clear on that? Ready to get to work? All right, let's start talking about it. If you get done with one, move on to the other questions as well. I think we should test one person multiple times because if it was like you get caught in the long putter and you get you the normal one and then it gets it in. That we got, we got like discussed it an experiment. Let's create an experiment. So I say take one person and have them test.